The voice calling the play-by-play -play in the 69 game was Bob Eufer. He's the voice of Michigan football. Bob called that victory the biggest upset in intercollegiate football history. Well, Bob sometimes gets a little carried away. But if we're doing a history of Michigan football 100 years long, we would be remiss if we did not include the voice of Michigan football, old Robert Frost Eufer himself. Youf, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Jimmy. Pleasure's all mine. And you know something, football fans? The game you just saw and heard was played right down here on Canham's that's right, right here in the hole that Yost Doug Chrysler paid for, Canham Carpet, and Schembecker fills up every cotton pick on Saturday afternoon with over 100,000 fans, and he's done it every Saturday afternoon since the middle of 1975. And you know also that this picturesque University of Michigan Stadium, this beautiful, largest collegiate-owned stadium in the world, has also been my home away from home for the last 40 years. That's right, I've had the pleasure of covering every Michigan game for 40 years, and the privilege of broadcasting every single game since the first game of 1945. That's 300 141 games, eight Rose Bowls, and an Orange Bowl. And you know something? I've loved every cotton-picking moment of every single game. It's been a true labor of love. And I think any of you fans who have ever been out here can relate to this statement that old youth's going to make right now. And that is there's nothing, nothing in the world like the excitement, the tension, the electricity, the charisma that permeates the air out here on Saturday afternoon just before kickoff. Oh, you can just hear that crowd, can't you? And hear that Michigan band playing, especially when that Michigan team comes out of that tunnel. Oh, how well I remember the view you're looking at now and some of the great players coming down this tunnel out onto the gridiron. The likes of Tommy Harmon, the only Heisman Award winner we've had. And then what about those spindly-legged, fuzzy-cheeked youngsters of the World War II days of 44, 45, and 46, and they matured as young men and became part of the legendary Fritz Chrysler's Mad Magicians, a national championship team of 47, followed by another national championship team in 48. Remember Ortman, Dufek Sr., and Koseski. Those lads won three Big Ten titles. And then how about the middle 1950s with All-American Ron Kramer, one of the greatest ends in the history of Michigan football. His teammates, Terry bar and remember Jimmy Van Pell and remember Tommy Mensch but who will ever forget the slow hip All-American halfback in the late 1950s Jimmy Pace and then how about Bump Elliott's players those great ones in the early 1960s a leading scorer on the Michigan team Dave Ramey in 1961 and 62 his running mate Benny McRae You know, football fans, as this old reporter and Michigan fan reflects in a very nostalgic way, I know I can safely say that no one knows the future, but the past rings loud and clear. A hundred years of memories seem to echo in my ear. From Yost right on through Chrysler, from Chrysler down to Bow, those coaches molded greatness for all the world to know. Young men like Tommy Harmon, who won the Heisman Award, names like Heston and Oosterbond, and of course, old Jerry Ford. A century of great players, of outstanding coaches too. And with the victors ringing in our hearts, we honor the maize and blue. And as I really look around here for the last time, I just can't help but feel down deep and in a very nostalgic way, that the godfather of all Michigan football, the late and great fielding H. Yost, up there in football's Valhalla, he's got to be smiling down on his Michigan right now. And I can hear him say, in his own inimitable southern draw, it's been a fantastic 100 years of Michigan football.